food program, which is the commodities, and the DOD produce procurement program have allowed us to expand the offerings that we offer our children. The U.S. food program, which used to be called the U.S. commodity program, has, has proven to be very, very um, beneficial to our school and I'm sure to many schools. This is where the government offers you commodities that they have purchased in bulk and then in turn processed them or sent them out to the schools for use in the school meal programs. Very, very um, positive program that offers you the biggest yeah, program. Um, been able to en enlarge our fresh fruit and vegetable selection options to our students by participating in the DOD program for the last 10 years. Um, it is a, it's cost savings to us because again you're not using your dollars, you're using your commodity dollars. You're not having to write a check to anybody um, for your invoices for produce. In our school district approximately 25 percent of the students participate in the breakfast program. Um, although that's lower than national average, uh, I'm very happy to see that many children come each day. Uh, one of the barriers that we have with uh, increasing our participation is um, we bus a lot of our students. The bus drop-off area is located on one side of the campus. The cafeteria is on the other side of the campus and the playground is with larger barriers or obstacles uh, that we have found in trying to provide breakfast in the classroom are the additional uh, equipment that would be necessary to transport both hot and cold food from the cafeteria to the classroom and then the, the labor and staff that would be required to do. In order to provide the summer food program, a, an area must be declared um, at least 50% of the students would be eligible for free. Our district, we have found that uh, it's very successful to run the summer meal program starting the week after school gets out for summer break and run it right up to the week before school starts again. Um, traditionally, a lot of school districts have made uh, summer feeding a, a three-week um, operation during when they're offering summer school. Um, I w we've also experienced a, a very good success rate by offering breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, and by actually serving Monday through Saturday. Um, I've had a hard time trying to find those kids that are only hungry Monday through Thursday or Monday through we Friday. We took one of our school buses, loaded our meals onto the bus, and actually drove a, the regular bus route and stopped at each bus stop for a couple of, well, I guess it was 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, let the kids get on the bus, enjoy their meal in a nice cool place. Um, I am in Arizona where it does get to be 110 most of the summer every day. And um, one day we pulled up to a stop and there was a family, or a man there with his four kids, and his kids got on the bus and I asked him to go ahead and get on the bus with me. And he explained that... Um, he had just lost uh, his job, the food stamps had run out, and he didn't know where his kids were going to get their next meal. And when he saw the bus coming down the road and knew he had an idea we were doing something like this, uh, he was actually crying as he was. One of the goals that we have in our food service operations is that we offer the healthiest meal selections, food selections that we can to all of our students, be that a kindergartner, and they started with fat free white milk. We moved to fat-free chocolate, and now we're serving fat-free strawberry. There were um, objections to us moving to a fat-free milk selection, and, but most of those came from adults who were not used to drinking fat-free milk. Um, it's very simple. If you're going to switch over, on Friday you're serving 1% milk, on Monday you're serving fat-free milk. Uh, kids will drink whatever you put out there. Um, the same thing applies to using the whole grain breads that we use. Uh, we've always used a wheat bread of some sort, and, and we don't offer a white bread and a whole wheat bread. We offer a whole grain bread, and that's the only offer. Well, there is a large number of um, federally funded food programs out there. Many districts feel like they're either too small or too big or, or, or whatever the reason is that they just can't possibly uh, participate in in as many programs as they probably could. Uh, I will tell you that we started with three schools and about 1,200 students. We're now at 17 schools and 12,000 students and we want to participate in every possible meal program that we can get into.